welcome back. I changed my name from Pocket Mars to Poly Mars, and you probably don't care, so I'll talk about why at the end of the video. Recently, I've been experimenting with using REST APIs in Unity. If you don't know what a REST API is, it's just a web service that can receive HTTP requests and return a message. For example, with the Open Notify API, you can request the current location of the International Space Station and it will return a JSON file with the ISS's current latitude and longitude. By using these APIs in combination with Unity's Unity Web Request function, there are a lot of interesting ways you can use these web services in your projects. For example, I actually used the Open Notify API to make an app for a competition that requests the current location of the International Space Station and maps it to a globe. I have a lot of different ideas for projects using REST APIs that I want to create, but I figured I'd start with something simple. I spent the past few days creating a small Unity project that displays the current real-world weather in your location in real time. I think this is a mechanic that could be interesting in a few different types of games. In a farming game like Stardew Valley, for example, players could check the real-life forecast and wait for a rainy day to plant their crops. So in this video, I'm going to explain how exactly I created this system. What I had to do can be divided into three steps. I had to get the user's current location, use the location to request the current weather of the user, and activate and deactivate different game objects in the scene based on the current weather information. To get the weather, I planned to use the Dark Sky Weather API, which can return any of these values for the weather. So I started by grouping these into broader categories and making simple effects for each type of weather in Unity using particle systems and sprites made with GIMP. I also might have gotten a little carried away and made an animated a player that follows the mouse cursor. Dark Sky takes latitude and longitude as an input when returning the current weather. I thought it would be able to use Unity's location service to easily get the player's latitude and longitude, but I kind of overlooked the fact that it only worked on mobile devices, so I wasted a lot of time trying to figure out why it wasn't working. I ended up having to use two additional APIs to get the current location of the user. First, I used whatismyipaddress.com to get the player's IP address. To do this, I basically just run a coroutine on startup that downloads the IP address from the URL. It waits for the text to be downloaded and if it fails, stops the function, but if it works, stores it in a string. Then I use ipapi.com to get the latitude and longitude of the IP address. This process is pretty similar to what I had to do to get the IP, but it's a little more involved since the API returns a JSON that I need to parse. In my script, I created a serializable class called locationInfo that is structured identically to the JSON file that ipapi.com returns. If a value returned in the JSON is in quotes, I make it a string, and if it isn't, I make it a float. Then, after I get the IP address, I run a coroutine that downloads a JSON with the location information from IP API using the IP. If it works, I use Unity's JSON utility class to create an object called info from the JSON data with the structure of the location info object. Now I can use info.lat and info.long to get the latitude and longitude of the player. And now that I have access to the player's longitude and latitude, I made a script that uses it to get the current weather of the player. The process is pretty similar to getting the player's location, but the JSON file returned by the Dark Sky API is a little more complex. This JSON file has multiple layers, but since the only value we need to access is in the currently object, I only need to create a class for the outermost level and the currently object within that level. From the get location script, I call a function in the weather data script that sets the values of the latitude and longitude to their values in the get location script, and activates a timer that will run a coroutine to request the weather information every 5 minutes. DarkSky's API allows for a thousand free requests per day, so I can make a lot of requests, but I wouldn't recommend updating the weather any more frequently than that. Then, once again, the coroutine downloads a JSON from DarkSky using the latitude and longitude and an API key. Then I use JSON utility again to create an object called info from the JSON, and I can access the values from the JSON using the object. For example, to get the temperature, I use info.currently.temperature. To get the weather, however, we'll be using the icon string, which displays a machine-readable summary of the weather. 
I made a simple state manager that activates the right weather game object for the current value of the icon and deactivates any other weather game objects that might be active. I also display a longer, more human-readable description of the weather, which is found in the summary string in the bottom left corner, and Dark Sky requires that you give them credit, so I put that in the bottom right corner. And now that it's done, I thought I'd show it in action. So if I go outside, it's looking pretty sunny outside. And then if I hop back inside and open the project, it accurately shows that it is sunny. If you want to try out the project for yourself, you can find the link to its GitHub repository in the description. If you want to use it, you'll need to provide your own Dark Sky API key, which you can get for free by registering on their website. And of course, if you like this video, consider subscribing, because I plan to do more projects using REST APIs in Unity, and also just other Unity experiments in general. If you have any feedback or suggestions for future content, please let me know in the comments. That's all, so before I end the video, I guess I'll talk about why I changed my name. I wanted to change my name eventually because there's this board game, and I figured I'm better off changing it sooner rather than later. And I also wanted to make an icon that was a little more unique than my old icon, which is just a clip art of Mars with a gradient. So I made this, and I like this icon more because it actually has colors similar to the colors of Mars, and it uses an art style that I've used in a few of my games instead of being generic clip art. So as a result of this change, my Twitter, GitHub, and itch.io links have changed, but I've updated all of my videos with the new links. That's all I wanted to address, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.